to BizHack Live. My name is Dan Gretsch. I'm the host of BizHack Live and the CEO and founder of BizHack Academy. Every Wednesday at 1230, we talk about small business marketing and small business technology tools that can help you grow your business. And today I'm thrilled to welcome uh, one of my uh, mentor is someone who I've been following for more than a decade now and who I've learned a lot from about marketing yourself online, Jay Berkowitz, uh, founder and partner of 10 Golden Ru Rules. Uh, today, he's going to be talking to us about 10 free strategies for internet marketing. He's going to put a focus on micro enterprises, small businesses with limited budgets, uh, limited time and limited expertise, the folks that we specialize in training uh, and many of you on the uh, webinar today. I wanted to take a second and just thank you for being here. I know a lot of us are Zoomed out, uh, but uh, you keep coming back week after week. You're uh, clearly interested in what we have to share and the community that we've built, uh, which you are a part of, which you are essential to. Uh, you're voting with your feet week after week, and we're so appreciative of you being here. Please tell your friends. Uh, we want to keep growing this community. We're now into season three. Uh, this is our 100th BizHack Live uh, since the beginning of when we started. Uh, it was very exciting. Uh, we number them and we're at BizHack 100 uh, coming up in March. So it's an amazing um, community service that we're providing, but something that only works if you guys show up. I wanted to thank our partners who have helped make season three possible. Uh, the American Marketing Association of South Florida, Miami Marketers, and the South Florida Integrated Marketing Association. Next week, we're partnering with South Florida IMA uh, to do uh, seven ways to supercharge your customer retention with uh, Patrick Neff uh, from Toyota. And he works in Toyota finance, but what he's really come to become expert in and where his passion lies is how do you maintain a relationship with your existing customers? Uh, a lot of times this is considered something that's more about customer service or the customer experience, and it doesn't always fall within marketing, but in truth, it's the single most profitable form of marketing there is. Keeping your customers happy, coming back, and ultimately telling their friends and inviting them to your business referrals. Um, that theme is going to be uh, kind of something we're going to be hitting on in a variety of different presentations. Uh, the week after that, we have the amazing Cheryl Cattell, I know a friend of Jay Berkowitz, is talking about LinkedIn for beginners and specifically how to build your personal brand. This is incredibly important when you're looking for a job or looking to establish yourself as a business owner with prospective clients. One of the first thing especially in a B2B setting that someone's going to do is they're going to look at your LinkedIn profile. And how do you make sure that that LinkedIn profile reflects the best version of you, the version of you that will help you close the deal? The week after that, uh, we have the amazing Tatiana McDaniel, another one of our certified instructors. She actually has been with us since the very beginning, since BizHack 1.0 in 2015. And she spent her career in agencies, and now she is, for the first time ever, the CMO in-house of an e-commerce company. And in this crazy rapid fire year, she has learned a ton of incredible lessons uh, going from the agency side, working with big brands to going in-house at a small upstart e-commerce company and how to market. And that, especially that relationship between customer retention and marketing, something that she didn't do a lot of when she was in the agency world. So I'm very excited to be in conversation with uh, Tatiana. She had a TikTok post go viral. They sold out of their stock. They uh, were at risk, honestly, of alienating a lot of potential customers. What she did next is really a case study uh, in how to manage customer relationships, even when you're delivering the bad news that were sold out. So I'm really excited to welcome uh, Tatiana. And then the following week, I'm going to be presenting our signature BizHack lead building system, the product of seven years of working with more than 700 small businesses, and really the core of everything that we do uh, and of our five-week paid program that many of you have participated in. Finally, we have the graduation celebration on March 10th of the current cohort. They call themselves the Digital Titans, and they're launching their first ads this week, 
and we're going to see the results of those campaigns on March 10th. If you're interested in just signing up all at once for all of this great content and other content that we have lined up for later in March and April, please join uh, BizHack Live Season Pass. It's a small amount of money that will help fund these moving forward, uh, indicate your interest, and you'll get an automatic um, calendar invite and follow-up email from every single one of these. So even if you can't make it, you're gonna get some of the great materials that we talk about. Finally, I wanted to take a minute and introduce the uh, in, in, in incredible Jay Berkowitz. In many ways, BizHack Academy and myself, Dan Gretsch, are following in the footsteps that Jay Berkowitz walked. He has been um, for 25 years uh, a, a marketing expert and for uh, more than a decade, really one of the leading lights in South Florida in, in marketing. And uh, he's a best-selling author, international keynote speaker, and award-winning thought leader. He's worked with Coca-Cola, Sprint, McDonald's, AT&T, and eDiets.com. But he's also uh, worked with small and growing law, for, uh, law firms, which, with his, which is his current focus, and small and growing businesses. And he has a tremendous amount of guidance and insight on folks with limited budget and time and how to market yourself. He's authored several books, including Internet Marketing for Law Firms, The 10 Golden Rules of Online Marketing, and 10 Free Internet Marketing Strategies. He's the founder of 10goldenrules.com. He's been on the faculty at University of San Francisco, and he's the host of a podcast, 10 Golden Rules for Internet Marketing. Um, Jay, you can invite me to the podcast anytime you want. I'd be happy to do it. I, I spent a decade at NPR. I love radio. Uh, one day I'll start my own podcast. But without further ado, the amazing Jay Berkowitz. I'm very, we're all very happy to have you here. I'm very blessed to have you here today, Jay. Well, awesome intro. Thank you, Dan. I, I think I'm going to, I'm going to bring you with you, bring you with me on my speaking and you can be my personal intro. That's so great. Um, I'm like your hype machine. Yeah. <laughs> bring it up. Um, I'm trying to share the screen. So I think you guys have to let me uh, have access to the screen. Okay. You're, you're a panelist, so you're, you're able to do so. There we go. All right, let me know when you can see it. Yep, we'll see it perfectly. Okay, great. And Jay, I, I will periodically interrupt you just to keep you on your toes, but really when questions are coming in, I'll, I'll make sure if, if there's a good moment to, to come cut in and, and, and uh, ask questions from sure. there. I'll, I'll be monitoring the chat for you. Yeah, we're going to do a couple um, exercises, learning exercises. So um, that'll be a good time, perhaps. Perfect. But we're going to do... Um, you know, our goal today is to share with you a number of free strategies to build a digital presence. And I don't know if you can see this, but I, uh, I wrote a book in the 2008 recession called um, 10 Free Strategies for Internet Marketing. And now we're in a, you know, a really tough time. So, you know, for a lot of businesses, uh, it's so valuable to have the free tools, the free strategies. But um, obviously, there's a number of paid ways to build your business, too. But today we're going to talk about the free and low cost strategies how to build your personal brand, a theme I call your network is your net worth. And as I mentioned a minute ago, we're going to do a couple integrated exercises that will give you tools to really take to market. So I think you really enjoy it. A little bit more about my background. I come from Winnipeg, Canada. It's actually one of the top five coldest cities in the world. One day last year, it was colder than Mars. And um, I got really smart. My wife, Bonnie, and I and our, our, our little puppy, Parker, moved to Florida. So we're super happy to be down here. We recently became American citizens. Uh, we're very proud of that. My background, I worked for Sprint and McDonald's restaurant. I sold some of the most delicious, high fat, fantastic, tasty food in the world. And after working for McDonald's, I moved to Florida to work at a company called eDiets.com and um, sold, uh, you know, sold diets and, and taught people how to lose those uh, McDonald's uh, 10 pounds. Um, at, while I was at eDiets, I wrote a presentation called The 10 Golden Rules of Online Marketing, which became my, the name of my company, my book, my podcast, um, and 10 Golden Rules has continued. I've written a couple other books, and my new book for 2021 is Internet Marketing for Law Firms, because we're doing a lot of work with law firms and professional services. Uh, the company's called 10 Golden Rules, as Dan mentioned. And without further ado, let's talk about 
10 free strategies for generating revenue from internet marketing. The first one I call location, location, location. Um, and you, you've heard that for a million years in, in retail. And it was all about getting that great location at the corner of Main Street and First Avenue. And if you had the best location in town, you had the best opportunity to do business. And I would argue that today the most powerful location is to be right at the top of a Google search for your product or service. And especially given everything we've gone through in the last year, um, you, you better have your, your, your uh, I's dotted and your T's crossed when it comes to your internet marketing presence. And the best place to start is when someone's searching for your, your product or service. Um, this is a search for car paint repair, Boca Raton. And Google is, you know, continues to sort of tweak and change how Google looks. But generally, we've got four PPC ads, pay per click, at the top of Google. Then we've got Google Maps and what Google calls GMB, and then 10 free SEO results. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on the paid today because today's strategy is how to get traffic with free. But this uh, location listing, uh, what Google calls your GMB, Google My Business, is super powerful and effective because tons of consumers love to click here. And it's the first free listing. And it's now above the free SEO. So the first thing you want to do, if you haven't already, is claim your business. Um, and if not like nine times out of 10 or 99 times out of 100, if you have a business listing, you'll find that business on Google already. And then what you need to do is you need to say, I own this business and claim the business. The next thing is, that's super important is something called consistent NAP, name, address, and phone. And we call it NAP, N-A-P in the industry. So what's super important here is uh, getting uh, a consistent exact name of your business and address of your business. So this was a search for car paint repair Boca Raton. My buddy Doug Hoffman owns Alltech Collision and Paint. And you'll see here that he's done a great job consistently listing the company. It's always Alltech Collision Ampersand Paint. And the address is always identically listed. And whether you're on Facebook or Angie's List or the Auto Body Alliance or BirdEye, which is a review site, he's got, he's, he's, he, he never says AND Paint or he never says all tech collision LLC or whatever the name of the company is. You always want to consistently list your name, your address, and your phone number on all of your listings and get listed lots of places. You see, Doug's done a great job of that. The next thing is getting lots and lots of reviews. So what you'll generally see in searches, it's not a rule, like it's not a de facto, but it's one of the main factors is having lots of reviews. So you see here that the number one result, this is actually a paid ad. The number one result here is um, Alltech and they have 28 reviews. Number two only has three reviews and number three has 15 reviews. So how do you get lots of reviews? Well, one thing you do is you focus on it. You definitely want to have um, lots of attention and lots of focus. I'm just going to do a quick check here and make sure we're good. Um, because I hear some beeping in the background. Dan, we're, we're all good, right? Just give me a thumbs up. Yeah, you're sounding very clear and uh, hearing a little bit of beeping, but um, I think it's coming from you because we're muted. Yeah, I'm just gonna quit quit a couple apps here. Okay, good. Um, all right, back, back to play. So, um, you know, focus on, on reviews um, is, asking your happy customers for reviews. So whenever you do a great job for someone, send them the link, the actual link to where they can do the review. Um, another approach is what I call the concierge approach. So a lot of companies are now starting to think about how important reviews are in the public domain. Like a lot of times we do this, I'm sure you do it as a consumer, you know, you do a search like this and you're like, well, these guys got 28 reviews and they're a 4.8. These guys got three and they're a 5.0. Well, that's probably friends and family because they only have three reviews. These guys only have a 4.2. So I'd say that there's like a 99% likelihood that the first choice is going to be all tech collision and paint. So as a business, you got to get lots and lots of reviews. So the other 
way to, to get great reviews is to have great service. So a lot of businesses are taking the concierge approach where if you went to a high-end hotel, the concierge would say, hi, welcome. You know, I'm here to help you with anything you need during your stay. I can make any reservations for you at our restaurants. If you need anything like dry cleaning, I can help take care of your stay. And that concierge is going to make sure you have a great stay. And at the end of the, the stay, you're going to give a great review. So think of that in terms of your business. How can you either as a, as a small business give a concierge approach or do you actually appoint someone to be the concierge? Like maybe your customer service manager, you're now going to think from the entire life cycle, the first time someone calls your business to when, when you, you wrap up your business relationship, how do you make that a fantastic experience, a five-star experience? And the concierge can also pick the best time to ask for that review. And the final thing is a tool called BirdEye. I mentioned that a minute ago. It's a great tool if you're like a law firm or a professional services or organization. And BirdEye actually facilitates the reviews, sends a note to all of your happy customers, and makes it super easy for them to post that review on Google and other places. Now, the first exercise I wanted to do, Dan, was to do a quick exercise. So let's get, uh, if everyone doesn't mind, uh, doing that for a minute so you can sort of like minimize your screen if you're good at Zoom. And what I want you to do is I want you to do this search, search for BizHack Miami, Florida. So I'm going to do it too. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to go and write a review for BizHack. And, and the other thing I want to show you is what's the best way you can get people to review your business. So let's search for BizHack. Miami, Florida. Dan, you don't mind if people sit, give you a five-star review, right? Oh my God, this is amazing. I'm uh, I'm pinching myself right now. <laughs> I, so, I did want to just quickly alert you that we're not seeing your screen in case that you wanted us to see your screen. Absolutely. So if you... <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. So what I did here is a search for BizHack Miami, Florida. And um, you can see it now. And where you see the reviews here. So you're just gonna click on the reviews and up here, write a review. Oh, the pop-up window's blocked because I'm not signed in with Google. But um, just for the sake of time, um, I will, Dan, I owe you a review and I'm gonna go back in and do it. I signed in with a generic browser so we didn't see anything untoward. But um, basically, Let's, let's go back for the purpose of doing this, right? So super easy way to do this. Two, two, two options you have. Number one is you just direct uh, someone here. You say, hey, click on reviews and click on write a review. Or in the back end of your Google My Business, which is where you manage your Google uh, Maps listing as a company, there's a link and you can send people a super short link and it gets them right to this review page. All right, so that's our first exercise. And hopefully you guys are taking a minute to say something awesome about BizHack. And I wanna see at least 10 more reviews uh, for Dan and Lilia after this exercise. All right, so see, there it is, write a review. And the best news is this stuff really works. So when you put a focus on your Google My Business and you increase your NAP, you increase your reviews, you put posts on your Google My Business itself, um, you see that the, the website visits is going up and the phone calls is going up that we're getting from Google My Business. Um, and this data can be linked to your Google Analytics, by the way. So uh, it's uh, location, 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 super valuable. Now, one thing that I want uh, certain categories to be aware of is there's a brand new thing in Google and it's either called Google Screened or Google Verified. So for law firms, real estate, and financial advisors, this is a brand new thing that's just come up in Google. And it's, it's right at the top of Google. And these are pay per call leads. And it's a program that's different from the Google ads. So if you are in legal, real estate or financial services. I actually recently did a, a whole one hour webinar on how to get listed, how to get approved by Google and screened and how to set it up and how to run the back end. 
So you can find my recorded webinars at 10 Golden Rules on our blog. So you just want to, if you want to check that out, if you're in legal, financial services, or real estate, and you haven't already gone through the process of getting approved. I mean, look at this. It's a game changer, right? It's right at the top of Google. It's above the ads and it's above the maps. All right. So that's the first section. I call it location, location, location. I see some questions are coming in. Um, absolutely. So um, you want to take a minute, Dan? We'll, we'll yeah, see. absolutely. So uh, Ruth Ann was asking uh, if you could just show again uh, the link where you can ask people to review. Um, one thing that we do after our courses is we invite people to uh, send in a link using the link that he's about to show you. Yeah. So um, there's two ways to do it. One is you log into your Google My Business where you manage your Google, your, your Google Maps area. So like Dan's logged in here, he set up his address, he set up his hours, okay? Um, and, and so in there is a place where you can get a link that's super easy to send to your customers. Or you can just say, hey, go to, you know, search our business name, like BizHack Miami, Florida, click on the reviews. So if I click here, it opens up this box and it says write a review and I click here to do the review. Perfect. Um, uh, we had a question about does Google My Business apply? This is a question we get all the time to online or virtual businesses, those that sell online but have no physical store brick or mortar presence. I mean, Google, Google My, My Business is really Google Maps and it's designed to get you to a physical location, but they do have one new exception, which is like if you're a plumber or an air conditioning guy and you work out of your truck, you can define a service area. And like if, if your home is your business, you don't have to, like people aren't gonna actually come to your home, obviously. If you're a plumber, you're gonna go to them. So there is a service area um, opportunity, um, you know, we, we do have like a, a physical address and we recently sh scaled our office way back down because so many of us are working from home most of the time. But I did keep one room so that I could have an address um, for our, our, you know, sort of virtual, virtual, mostly virtual business now. So um, I would recommend, you know, if you are competing in a category um, like law or financial or, or um, plumbing or something like that, at least get an address. Um, it could be just a small suite in someone else's office, uh, but I would recommend that. Um, Camilla asked, can, uh, Camilla Ceballos, can, how can Google reviews be used for wholesale businesses? I think this would also apply to just generally B2B businesses. Yeah, um, great question. And, you know, similar thing, um, you know, focus, 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 focus. So having a concierge approach to your business, um, reviews are so important for every business today. Um, not just retail. So, um, you know, focusing your organization on getting great reviews, assigning either someone to be the concierge or, um, you know, assigning a group of people like all the customer service people or all the salespeople. And then one of the things is like, you know, Dan, you hear this all the time, what's focused on gets attention uh, from management and from a company. So a lot of times what we do is we'll put a little contest in place. Um, we'll say uh, for every five-star review you get, you get a $25 restaurant gift certificate. And one of the, the guys I know who wanted to move from 500 to 600 reviews had a contest in addition to the restaurant gift certificate. Everyone who got a review got a ticket and that ticket was eligible for a thousand dollar cash prize at the company's holiday party. So, you know, focusing on reviews is the best way to get results. Fabulous. Uh, something that BizHack could probably do better. Jane Moore uh, and Ross Can both had questions about this Google screened uh, vacation. I, hey, Dan, I, I think we're getting into the weeds here. Uh, okay. like, you know, they're good weeds, but like I want to get through a lot of stuff. Why don't we do this? Either we'll take questions at the end or like for all the, the particulars on Google screened, I did an entire one hour webinar one, one, uh, like two weeks ago. It's fresh. The recording's free. It's on my website. All you have to do is go to 10 Golden Rules, click on blog, and there's tons of stuff about Google Screen. Perfect. So, and so, we'll also share that link in the chat. Awesome. All right. So the next section, the next way to get free traffic to your website is SEO or search engine optimization. And down here, so below the paid ads, 
it, and, it, and if it's legal, it there would be a, a Google screen at the top. Below the maps is what we call our traditional organic or free or SEO. Now SEO means search engine optimization. And so we sometimes call this the SEO section, but search engine optimization is also a verb. And it means you can optimize your website to appear in this free section. So what are the things you can do? Well, Google's mathematical algorithm, there's like over 600 factors that Google's gonna go through to pick you know, who gets a first position, second position, third position, or who's on page 1000. And literally almost every search you do today, Google has over you know, a million results. So you know, there's thousands of pages. If you keep, keep clicking next, um, you'll be way deep uh, in the search results. But where you really wanna be is on page one. So instead of trying to teach 600 factors, I try and make everything simple. And I've reduced this down to the A, B, Cs, you know, the three main things that you wanna focus on to improve your SEO, to get here in this free area of Google searches. So whether you're searching for a car accident lawyer or a car auto paint repair or fantastic online education like you get from BizHack, how do you get your, your company, your website, your business to rank in the free area? Well, you follow the ABCs. So the first thing is your website structure, the architecture of your website. We look a lot at a lot of different factors when we do a website audit, like um, the code to text ratio. And then a lot of this gets very technical, but you know, ob obviously it's Google is not a human. It, it's a mathematical algorithm that they've written. So you, if, if, if your website is a mess and there's like, it's been, it's 10 years old and five different guys have worked on it, you know, you're going to have a, a, a very complex code to text ratio. So you, you've, it's got, your website's got to be simple from a coding standpoint on the back end. It's got to be fast. And Google has a free site speed analyzer. So you can look at your site speed. This is pretty good. Uh, the site load time is not so good. Um, when does your domain expire? So if you're telling Google that, you know, my domain expires in three months, you're not telling them, hey, we're in this for the long term. So, and by the way, if it's your main domain, I recommend, you know, re register for 10 years. It's only 10 bucks a year, but you're, you're making sure you don't lose your domain. You're also telling Google, hey, we're in this for the long run. And then there's a lot more technical things. But the, the core message there is you want to make sure your website, your architecture is clean. We recommend WordPress websites. Um, they're over... 50% of new websites today are built in WordPress. There's lots of coders who know how to work in WordPress. So if you're looking at a new website, I always recommend uh, putting WordPress at the top of your list. Now, the next thing, the A is the architecture, how your website's structured. The B is backlinks. Other sites linking to your site are a vote for your website and they make your site seem more valuable or important in Google's eyes. So here we got a link from BNI, which was, is my, one of my networking groups, to www.10goldenrules.com. So this is a link from another website to your website. These are not the links on your website. This is another site saying, hey, there's something valuable over at 10 Golden Rules that you want to go check out. So like when we got written up in the Wall Street Journal, we got a bunch of links to 10 Golden Rules talking about um, the, the story and, and, and how we were featured in the Wall Street Journal. And, and so the A is architecture, the B is backlinks, links from other site linking back to you, and the C is content, newsletters, articles, press releases, great stuff that you're going to add to your website. Now, I promised you guys a couple little exercises. We did the first one, and here's the second one. And this is one of the magical things that I've learned in the last couple of years. That's the easiest thing for a business to do. And one of the most powerful things you can do. And that is answer questions that your customers and prospects ask you. Answer those questions on your website. Maybe at your reception, start collecting the questions that people are always asking you. On your sales team, in your customer service, if you have you know, different departments. Or even if you're just a one or two person operation, you know, keep a list. I keep a list in a tool called Evernote, super easy. 
what are the questions people are asking me that I can answer on my website? So I want to do a little exercise here where everybody writes down like the three questions that you always get asked in your business, or maybe some of the new questions that you get asked in your business. Because what we're going to do is we're going to answer these questions on our website to benefit our SEO. So if you guys don't mind, um, you, can, um, you can actually uh, type them in the chat or you can write them down for yourself. I'd like some of you guys to share if you don't mind. Um, so let me see, we got the chat here, okay. Yeah, and I'd recommend you put them in the chat and that you make sure that you share it with panelists and attendees. And then what we can do is we can actually include the list of questions that you ask in the follow-up email we'll be sending to all of you. So I definitely recommend that you put it in the chat um, because it'll be useful for you to see the questions that your peers are putting out there. Yeah, so I'll give you a couple examples as thought starters. So like here, here's a really good example because what we're gonna do with these questions is we're gonna answer these questions on our blog and on our social media so that when people come to our website, we're giving them the content they're looking for. But the other part of that, Dan, and I'm sure you know this, is that if you're answering questions, it's the best new kind of search engine optimization. Because like, I'll give you an example from our, our lawyer clients. One of the new questions they're getting asked all the time, I was in a car accident, I was in an Uber, who pays for the insurance? Or am I covered with insurance if I was in a car accident in a lift? Now, Dan, you can appreciate, and I'm sure everyone in the audience, the Uber question was never asked five years ago because Uber was just basically being, being invented and not that many people rode in Ubers. But now a lot of people have gotten rid of their car. They're in Ubers all the time. Accidents happen. And so that's a new question. Now, why is that important? It's because when people ask that question of a lawyer or they ask, ask it of Google, you know, who am, am I covered for insurance if I'm in an accident in an Uber? If you can answer that question, it's a brand new opportunity in search engine optimization that didn't exist five years ago. So that's the kind of question that we love um, because it's, it's like new and it's new to Google and you have a chance to rank right at the top of Google. All right, so everyone's being awesome <laughs> and they're asking great questions. Um, so Dan's saying, when, when does your next course start? Um, so, you know, from an SEO standpoint, Dan, you might ask that like, um, you know, um, are there any upcoming, um, you know, marketing courses available in Miami? Or are, are there any um, small business courses uh, available online? So you'd ask it the way someone would ask a question like from an SEO standpoint. Um, Jonah says, what is public relations? And I assume Jonah is in the public relations business. Um, so that's a really good example. What is public relations? How much does public relations cost? Um, what are some of the best ways to get public relations coverage? and you answer those questions in your blog. Um, I'm looking for someone else. Armando, uh, what insurance do you take in your clinic? Great question. Um, so, you know, uh, what, it, what insurance do you take? And then you get some keywords in there. So if you guys are at like a rehab clinic or a physiotherapy clinic or a dental clinic, you know, get a few more keywords in there. That's fantastic. Um, I have a Facebook page. What else is there? <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, that's Jonah's the P PR company again. Um, why do I need an outside HR company when I have an HR department? Uh, great question. And so a lot of, if these are the kind of questions you get asked all the time, you answer these questions on your blog and I'm gonna show you another valuable, a bunch of additional valuable ways we can use those questions. All right, so the good news is that this stuff works. When you apply the ABCs, when you answer questions on your blog and in your social media, you can really see a tremendous increase. Um, for example, this client had zero um, SEO results when we started tracking, 
And now they have 586 different phrases that they rank for in their business. Um, they're now up to 13,000 visitors a month, and they went from 12 leads a month to 581 leads. Um, and, and most of that is from SEO. All right, so the next uh, category we're gonna go into, I like to call personal branding. And I first discovered this um, back in 2003. And there's a local guy, I, I know a lot of you are in South Florida, named Jeff Sabar. And Jeff was speaking at an American Marketing Association event. And he talked about the brand of you, personal branding. And this article had just come out. Um, and and Dan, uh, uh, Jeff Sabar was one of the first people who, who really taught me this uh, strategy that you've got to think of yourself like a personal brand, but more importantly, think of your job as a personal brand manager. So if I'm, you know, at that time I was working at a dot com and I was, I was looking for something additional in my career. I'd had a number of top marketing jobs, but I wanted, you know, I wanted to be at the big table. I wanted to be involved in company decision making. And so I was looking at a personal branding exercise for Jay. So what were my personal brand assets? Like if I was the, the product manager at Coca-Cola, and I was in the past, um, how would I think of myself and marketing myself? And, and you know, this question's for you. You know, what's unique about your abilities and how are you going to market them? So I, I started thinking about, okay, I was, I was a strategic marketer and I had digital marketing experience. And I wrote the 10 golden rules of online marketing. I was asked to speak at the Direct Marketing Association. The reason why I picked that topic was I wanted to create a personal brand for Jay as a strategic marketer and as a digital marketer and as an expert in digital marketing. And so I carved out my niche as an expert in digital marketing at a high level with you know, strategic thinking, I didn't just write, you know, hey, three tricks for SEO. I wrote the 10 golden rules of online marketing. I positioned it at a high strategic level. So think of your resume as your personal brand uh, packaging. What have you done to improve your resume? As a matter of fact, one of the interview questions that I learned from one of the smartest guys um, in, in HR in the world is, where do you want to be in six months? And what have you done? Or where do you want to be in three years? And what have you done in the last six months to get there? So your resume and your, your social media should reflect all the things you're doing to, to be a great person, to be um, an expert in your field. What courses have you taken? What um, you know, blogs have you built? Websites have you built? And that should be reflected in your resume because your resume is your own personal packaging or if you own your own business, it should be reflected on your website and your social media. I mean, this is the very early days of 10 golden rules, but you'll see that everything we did was very consistent from our website to our business card, to our branding and all of our packaging. And of course, this has evolved a lot over the years. So think about building your personal brand. I'm gonna spend a little time today on LinkedIn and Dan has a great LinkedIn profile. I mean, this is, Really fantastic. Congratulations, Dan. Um, so you see here that, you know, he's got a great uh, profile picture. You, you never want to have like your arm around someone and that person's cut off or, you know, partying at, at an event. You know, you want to have a professional headshot. And then your background here is an amazing opportunity on LinkedIn to talk about your business and who you are and what you do. The other thing is your description shouldn't just be your job title, right? Like Dan might be, you know, the president or the founder, but here he says, enjoying the freedom of finding your customers online. We train business owners worldwide in online lead generation and digital marketing. And instead of having like president here, he's got like a phenomenal introduction to his value, his brand value. So some of the things here, here's another great example, you know, great background. This guy's got his book. Um, he's got a lot of um, value added in his description. Um, another tip, um, there's a great tool called Canva, and they have a free LinkedIn banner generator. So I put a 
a picture of a presentation I did in Washington, DC. Um, C-A-N-V-A is Canva. And you can do amazing stuff, social media and everything. And they have tons of free uh, products in there. Um, another advanced way to keep building out your LinkedIn, um, if you click here to see contact info, you can add other information like your website, um, add a phone number. A lot of people are going to try and reach you. Um, your address and your zip code, very important for SEO because people might be looking for local resources um, in, your, in your subject matter expertise. So you want to build as complete a profile on LinkedIn as you can. And one other uh, tip, I mean, obviously, we've done whole presentations on LinkedIn in the past. Um, one of the fantastic things you can do is we talked earlier about answering questions. If you answer questions that are on the tip of your prospect's tongue, if you answer questions that your customers are asking all the time, and we're going to put that on our website as a blog post, but we're also going to put it in our social media. It's super valuable when you add those questions and answers as articles in LinkedIn. So look how powerful this is. Not only does your network see it when you post it on LinkedIn, LinkedIn emails out and says, hey, look what Lee Auden and Jordan Zimmerman are talking about. They actually push out these articles. Now, all they did is they copied and pasted an article from their blog into LinkedIn, but it says, here's what your connections are in the news. You know, it's not news. They just, they just published an article. So one of the valuable things we're going to do, and I'm going to give you a strategy for actually executing this at the end, you're going to take your questions and answers, and you're going to publish those on LinkedIn. Now, I like to simplify things as, as you're learning. And there's a million social media, but I want to tell you there's four that really matter. I call these the big four. So we talked about LinkedIn, Facebook and Instagram are, are you know, Facebook owns Instagram, similar platforms. Uh, Twitter um, also I would say is in the big four. And I say here, be kind of good at one because a lot of people get hung up with the fact that like, oh, I got to do Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn. And now there's Clubhouse and I've got to update my GMB. And like, it seems like, oh my goodness, how am I going to do all this? But really, if you want to be a rock star, if you want to stand out, if you're a real estate agent, all you have to do is take a, 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 a video every time you go to a property, post that on Facebook and, and, and YouTube, and then cascade it onto all the other social media. You don't have to do all the social media. Just do the video, put it on YouTube, and then use that link on all the social media. <clears throat> if all you do is once a week post a video, I guarantee six months from now, everybody's going to be say, oh my goodness, you must get so many listings. I see you everywhere. They don't see you everywhere, but you're just consistently executing against a strategy. Now, when I say be kind of good at one, here's a little tactic that, as I said, either, you know, post a video every week or, you know, when a new social media comes out, there's a, an interesting opportunity. This guy, DJ Khaled, most people had never heard of, but when Snapchat came out, he started posting four or five times a day with these like motivational Snapchat messages. Well, next thing, this guy was one of the biggest stars in the world. He was recording with Jay-Z. He was, uh, you know, recording with, with Drake. He was at get basketball games with Jay-Z. I mean, this guy who doesn't look that healthy even got an almond milk commercial. Um, so obviously the power of his network, because he became the guy on Snapchat, was very, very valuable. So one of the, oh, and here's another guy, Dr. Michael Salzer. He put out videos of doing uh, plastic surgery, and he got a TV show about plastic surgery. So this is a little tactic that you can take advantage of. Um, this is a, a relatively new uh, social media called Telegram. And with uh, all, the, all the recent uh, people being banned in some of the social media, a lot of people are going to Telegram or Parler, which even got shut down. And then there's a super hot new one called Clubhouse. Um, and if you can get an invite, it's invite only. There's some really cool things going on in Clubhouse. But you have a strategy opportunity right now in Clubhouse, like DJ Khaled had when Snapchat came out. This is a brand new media. People are gravitating to it because it's invitation only. It's audio only. And there's all these chat rooms. 
So if you started a clubhouse chat room and you invited people in your industry and you hosted this room and you invited new people to clubhouse, you could become known like DJ Khaled became known, maybe not on an international scale, but you could become known as the clubhouse real estate guy or the clubhouse PR woman or the you know clubhouse um, plastic surgery expert, right? And then this is, um, I said the new kids, uh, you know, Telegram, Parlor, Clubhouse. Here's another super important social media that a lot of people don't realize is actually a super important social media. <clears throat> and I mentioned it right off the top. It's your Google Maps. You can actually do updates in Google Maps. People can do reviews in your Google Maps. You can have questions and answers in your Google Maps. Wait a minute. What does that sound like? Well, it sounds to me like a very important social media for business because it's the social media that comes right to the top of Google when people are looking for your products and services. How do you improve your listings on, on Google Maps? Reviews, Q&As, updates. You can add those videos that you shoot every week to your Google Maps. So don't forget, this is a little hidden hidden gem. It is, I, see, I believe it's one of the most important social medias for business. Um, it's actually Google Maps. Now, the next section is called your network is your net worth. And if you can go to cool networking events and you can build your network, it is one of the most powerful free ways you can build money and, 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 and income for your business. Now, of course, today networking is moved all digital. So today we're talking about free digital strategies for building your business. And I would argue that one of the most powerful things you can do is build a network of people who know, like, and trust you, and they're gonna send you business on a regular basis. So one of the things I've done since um, Corona is I've not only doubled down, I've quadrupled down on networking. And in the old days, I used to try and do a lot of lunches. There's a great book called Never Eat Alone. And I used to try and do at least two or three um, lunches with someone in my network or someone who's, who's like a great referral partner, um, I used to try and do two or three lunches every week. Well, the good news is, you know, I, I went and met a buddy for lunch. I've, I've only gone for a couple lunches since, you know, since uh, last year. But, you know, I had to get dressed more than I normally get dressed. I had to get in my car. I had to drive to lunch. We had, I had to wait a few minutes till he showed up. And then we picked a table. And then we had lunch. And then we had coffee. And then we schmoozed on the way out. And then I drove home. It was like two, two hours, two and a half hours. What a waste of time. I could have done four Zoom networking meetings in that same amount of time. So I'm going to a lot of great networkers. Like today, we have an opportunity. There's a bunch of folks on this meeting. And maybe, Dan, we can open it up at the end for some networking. And you could meet a bunch of great people. Now, here's the good news. When you go to a networking meeting, and I'm giving you some really good news, even if it's a Zoom meeting, you don't have to meet everybody. You don't have to hand everybody your business card. You don't have to feel the pressure. Oh my God, I've got to sell something. Because you actually don't want to sell anything at a networking meeting. What you want to do is meet one to two connections and have a follow-up meeting. And Zoom, you can do a free Zoom meeting. It's 40 minutes free. A meeting just like this. And you can do a one-on-one -on -one with people. I'm doing them all day, every day. And what you want to do is pick out two or three people in that room who, who are great for your business. So like if you're a lawyer, maybe a great uh, referral partner is an accountant. Or if you're a PR person, maybe a great uh, connector is someone who does digital marketing or um, builds websites, right? So you want to find someone in the room who has a similar client set, who doesn't do what you do, but they could refer you to their clients. And you want to set up a Zoom one-to-one -one with those folks. Now, one-to-one -one is a term that comes out of networking. And what it means is, I'm actually not going to try and sell you. I'm actually going to try and learn who are the great referral partners for you. And you're going to try and learn that from me. And we're going to try and build a relationship called No Like and Trust, where I know you, Dan and I had a Zoom one-to-one, -one, and then Dan said, hey, I want to um, introduce you to this person. And I introduced him to someone, and he booked me for the speaking event. We, were, we had a reciprocal no like and trust relationship. And it wasn't just about, you know, can I, can I sell Dan? Can Dan buy my services? No, 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 that's the wrong mindset. 
The right mindset is building a network with the network. Here's a little tip I've been using recently. I created a Google Sheets, which is a Google spreadsheet. It's just the same as in Excel. And everyone I meet, I've created five or six different columns. What business are they in? What are some keywords? So if I want to search for them in the future, and I'm like, who's that guy who's, uh, who's, who does IT for accountants? I met this guy last week. And I added one additional column called what's their passion? Because that's a really good thing. My friend Jeff Michelle says, collect passions. So if he's into wine or he's into yoga or he's into uh, Krav Magra. I put that keyword in there. So when I come across a, a really great wine that's only $20, I can search that database for wine and I can send those people a note and say, hey, I came across this wine. And that's a great way to, to, to you know, know, like, and trust or build your network. Now, I want to wrap up with a couple more great exercises because I promised you uh, uh, valuable things that we can use going forward. So we, we did the exercise where we wrote the questions. And then we're going to use those questions as answers to blog posts on our website. And then we're going to take that content and we're going to put it in our social media. But here's a magical little trick. We answered 29 questions for our client, AMC. These guys uh, recondition hotel furniture and you can get you know, really spectacular furniture at low prices. And we wrote 29 blog posts, but we did it with a mission. We actually wrote the table of contents first. We wrote the blog post second, and then we compiled them all into an ebook. So what I want you to do is I want you to think about over the next, let's say, you know, 10 days or 10 weeks, depending how aggressive you are, I want you to answer the 10 questions you get asked most frequently or the 10 questions, you know, five questions you get asked all the time and five questions <clears throat> that your prospects should be asking. And I want you to take just one minute and think of what would you call your ebook that you could put on your website if over the next 10 weeks you write 10 blog posts we're going to compile this into an ebook and we're going to use this as a lead generator because it's so important to build your database that you can email people over the next several months and years. So I want you to all, uh, if you don't mind sharing, you can put them in the chat. What would you call your ebook if you compiled the 10 questions that you get asked most frequently? guys are putting that in the questions. I'm going to stop sharing for a minute. You know, Dan, one of the, the things is when you go to present mode, you can't see, I can't see your face. So yeah, <laughs> you have to, you have to get really good at talking to avoid. I know that's hard. Yeah. All right. Dan, did you think, did you do the exercise? Yeah, I'm working on it right now. It's a, uh, how to grow your uh, online sales, even if you don't have time, money, or expertise. That's awesome. Lily, are you playing along or are you just, uh, you're just here to help us? <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah, I, I'm like um, thinking through all uh, Best Hacks um, goals and, and strategies and reviews. And thank you all uh, you guys who have written a review for us in the last hour. Thank you so much. How many did we get in the end, Lilia? Uh, let's see. Our goal was 10. Refresh this page. Here we have eight. All right, so two more guys. We just need two right, more. One's coming for me, so we just need one more. All right. Um, Dan, can you see that? I can't see, find the chat for some reason. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I'll read a couple. Uh, so. Uh, Audrey Salazar asked, uh, said, do I qualify for diminished value? Stacy C said 10 skincare kits you should implement right now. Ross Khan has everything you need to know about building a new house. Armando has, hey, Dan, how Dan, I just want to chip in on a couple of those. So those are really great. And one of the powerful things you can do, um, I'm going to go back to uh, presenter. Uh, just make sure you guys can see the screen. Um, 
Those are really, really awesome. And I just want to add a, add a little value. One of the things that you can do is uh, you guys can, you can see this now, right, Dan? Yeah. Is you can take some of those questions and put them as bullet points. So the people know what they're getting, right? So, so like here, these guys sell, um, you know, hotel furniture and they're providing you 20 ways to increase your room rates. And in the hotel business, that's really important, right? If you can charge $59 a night or $159 a night, you know, one of the ways you can do it is by improving your, your facility, improving your um, reviews, right? So you can write some of those tips, so some of your questions as bullet points in, a, in addition to the title. So you might have one of those great titles that you mentioned, but include a subtitle that includes some of the value. Um, and just in terms of time, Dan, I'm going to keep rolling, all right? Um, so here's a, an awesome little tip. You can actually write a book. Um, you, you, you can create your ebook just by writing your next 10 blog posts and then go to Fiverr. It's uh, F-I-V-E-R.com or F-I-V-E-R-R.com. And for five bucks, I always search, sort by the most highest rated. You can get someone to design your ebook. And, and for five bucks, like if you see the book behind me, um, I got that built on, designed on Fiverr and I'm writing the book. So the book's coming out this year but it looks like the book's already here. So I wanna just bring this all together with my final tip, which is something I call cascading content. And basically if you follow the, the simple exercises we did today, we did that for a reason. We answer questions because that's the new SEO. And if you add those questions to your website in the form of a blog post or an article, and people are looking for something new, like, you know, what do I do if I get hit in an Uber? You know, it's a brand new lawyer question that can get a great case for my lawyer clients. If we add that to the website, it's either, either a newsletter article or a blog post. We're capturing the new SEO, the way people do Google searches. They ask questions. So we put that on the website. Then every week we do a minimum of one question. So you've got to answer one question a week. And then every month we take those four questions and we put them out as our MailChimp e-newsletter. Everyone should have an e-newsletter. It's free. It's powerful. It's, it, it reminds people you're there. It's easy for people to forward as a referral recommendation for your company. It's the most overlooked, powerful, free marketing tool that so many companies are like, oh, we do it quarterly when we get to it. Every month I send out my newsletter, I get inquiries. So you got to get yourself organized. And the easiest way to do it, answer a question every week. Once a month, hire an intern. You can hire someone on Fiverr for five bucks or 20 bucks. They'll send out your newsletter for you. You can do it in the form of a video. <clears throat> I talked about that earlier. Super powerful, super effective. Film, you know, sit down and answer four questions just on your iPhone or, or your Android. Put those on YouTube. Put them on your blog so you can put the video here. You can put the description of the video there. Then every month, send out those four videos as your e-newsletter and simply add those things to your social media. So I call it cascading content because it cascades like a river from the river down to the waterfall. Super duper easy. With that, we got a couple minutes left for questions and um, I'm happy to take any questions. Um. So one of the questions is, how do I get on your newsletter? <laughs> That's the kind of question that you want to get. Is that, um, is that a question for me or is that? Oh yeah, it's for you. How, how can people get on your newsletter? Just go to 10goldenrules.com and um, sign up for the 10 golden rules or sign up for one of my webinars. Perfect. We'll add you. Um, we had a question about um, Facebook and Apple, which have been in the news over uh, Apple's new iOS, which is going to basically allow people, uh, force people to opt in to being tracked by Facebook and other apps. Uh, this puts Facebook's entire advertising uh, infrastructure at risk. And so Facebook has launched a very high profile attack uh, on Apple in the name of small business owners everywhere. Would love for you to weigh in. Um, I think you said it well. I mean, it's, it's um, 
unfortunately, these big uh, social networks have taken advantage of us uh, too much. They've, they, you know, they went past the tipping point um, where they used too much of our data. They made too much of our private data available to businesses. Um, Facebook, when, when Facebook got in trouble for that whole Cambridge Analytica thing, we had an immediate disaster in all of our advertising campaigns because they pulled out a bunch of data and all of our campaigns were built around data, you know, targeting people based on where they lived and how much revenue they had. And most importantly, other th previous things they'd done on Facebook, you know, signed up for our, you know, watched one of our videos, signed up for one of our eBooks. And when they uncoupled a lot of the data, all our campaigns stopped working as well. We kind of had to rebuild everything and it hasn't been the same since, frankly. So um, I think it's a bit of a disaster. They all overstepped their grounds and, and now they're paying for it and we're paying for it. Yeah. By the way, Jay, if you don't mind just stopping sharing so we can see your beautiful. Oh, I thought I did. In full. <laughs> there you go. Um, Carl Gittens asked an interesting question. I like the question. How do I get clients to ask questions online? My clients call in with questions. And there's kind of an interesting kind of assumption that may or may not be true with that. What would you say to Carl? Well, there's a couple couple answers to that. But Dan, if I, if I was to say to you, I can get you 30% more leads with one simple application, would you say like, that's cool? I want to check that out. Of course. And uh, the, the answer in, in, in some industries, not, not everyone, is to add chat to your website. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple um, companies we use called Apex Chat is a really good one. And uh, you do pay for a qualified lead, but every other interaction is free. So Apex Chat is awesome because like we use it for lawyers and accountants and professional services. So if somebody's actually inquiring uh, about the law firm and they meet the criteria and they're in that practice area, we might pay 15 or $20 for that chat. But what happens, I, I believe, you know, as a consumer, five years ago, chat rarely worked. Now as a consumer, when you go to a website, sometimes chat's better than, you know, calling customer service. Cause you know, I, I was trying to call our um, internet provider this week and cause you know, I was on hold forever and I did the chat and it was like, I got my answer right away. So as a consumer, our, our experience with chat is much better. So what we see is when we add chat to a website, we actually improve conversions up to 30%. So that's one way to get people to interact with you. The second answer is, is also how you structure your campaigns um, and, and how you, you structure your website. Your phone number should always be super prominent in the top right-hand portion of your website. And if you are doing some paid campaigns, um, for example, on Google, you can weight your campaigns very heavily towards mobile. And uh, like if you, what, what we find like for the same law firms and, and, and uh, professional services, a phone call generally converts at 24%. A form fill, only 2% of the people who fill out forms overall convert to a client. Why is that? Well, my theory is that a lot of times people are Google searching and you know, if they go to your site and they fill out a form, and they go to your competitor's site and he has a big prominent phone number or he has a mobile campaign with a clickable uh, click to call number, they'll call him, make an appointment with him. And then when you email him back tomorrow and say, hey, I got your form on my website, you're like, dude, I already got an appointment book. You know, like, like you're, you're missing the boat. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, you don't actually say dude, but subconsciously. <laughs> yeah, you say dude inside your head. Subconsciously, you got duded out of an opportunity. So you know, make, make mobile available either in your campaigns or very prominently on your website. And um, we find chat somewhere in the middle. You know, you can increase your performance 10 to 20% with chat by adding that to your website. Yeah, and, and, and you know, what was embedded in Carl's question was an assumption that people aren't asking this question to Google. Um, and uh, what I would say to you, Carl, is yes, they are but you just don't know it because you're not ranking for those searches. It's an invisible opportunity that you're missing out on. Um, I wanted to, um, you know, someone asked, Susan Shine asked the, the kind of key follow-up question, which is assuming many people opt out of data sharing with Facebook, how does that force you to restructure your marketing? Uh, my short answer to that is, that's what every digital marketer in the land is asking themselves right now. 
Um, so I'm not sure there is a good answer, but it is the right question. I don't know, Jay, if you would add to that. And we had nope, one or two other. It. You yeah, it. it's just, it's just, it's a, it would really fundamentally change. It's going to change the landscape. No question. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Andre asked a great question. Uh, what are the strategies for web crawling and data mining to generate leads? Uh, well, uh, the, the short answer is we don't recommend web crawling. Um, the short answer is um, I'm, I'm in a group. But are you familiar with Seven Figure Agency? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's uh, also created by a South Florida guy named Josh Nelson. And uh, there's like 200 agencies and we all share best practices with each other. <clears throat> and um, essentially most people are finding that, you know, the scraped lists and the web scraping is less valuable than actually buying a list and, you know, sort of more professionally vetting your list. Um, so uh, most of those guys are, are buying lists uh, from companies like, uh, in, I think, Info USA and SIC Code is a really good one. And they're very up-to-date lists where you can get, you know, the name, the title, the address, the phone number, the email, and then... Uh, doing like a more, you know, you're, you're still not supposed to email those folks, but uh, let's say you did, you would uh, ask them to opt in to receive information or offer them like your ebook. You know, that's a great use of the ebook we, we, we wrote earlier. You know, take the 10 questions you get asked most frequently, go to Fiverr, get a beautifully designed ebook cover, send everyone an email and say, hey, you know, here's the 10 most frequently asked questions about, you know, like internet marketing for law firms. And when folks opt in for that, then you add those people to your email list. So that would be a more sophisticated way of doing um, marketing. I don't recommend scraping, but um, if, if you were to go about it, I would do it that way. Yeah, when he wrote web crawling, what he was really talking about is scraping websites. Web crawling is what the Google algorithm does. Uh, scraping a website is using your own self-built algorithm to basically take public data and pull it off of websites. Uh, a lot of times you can harvest email addresses and uh, lead lists this way. Uh, the challenge is that you don't really have permission from them to reach out to them. And so you're risking uh, violating spam rules and frankly, annoying customers, potential customers. So what's much better, frankly, is uh, inbound which is uh, what Jay is talking about by being terribly useful to your customers by answering their questions, almost like pulling the questions out of their head and um, putting them in. Now, Amy Williams, uh, number two asked, we have two Amy Williams and we always have to indicate one and two. Uh, this is number two, uh, who I'm gonna give an invite to Clubhouse. She asked, how can you figure out the questions your customers might be asking other than what you already know. I, I love this question as well. Jay, you want to give it a crack? How can you figure out what your customers are asking? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, Google used to tell you what people queried to come to your website, but they give you very little of that information anymore. Um, uh, you know, there's a, a number of great tools. Like one of the things is uh, join a Facebook or LinkedIn group in your industry and see the questions that people are asking all the time you know, and answer those questions <clears throat> as an expert in the group. And then t take that answer and copy and paste it and, and get it on your blog and your social media and in your ebook. Um, you know, here's, here's another, like a little light bulb thing. Um, you know, for me, I'm a little slow sometimes, but after many years, the light bulb occasionally goes on. And, um, you know, I'll be, an a, a client will ask a question like, you know, um, you know, we, we got approved for Google screen, but our, our ads aren't showing up, you know, and I'll be like, oh, okay, great. I gotta, you know, I gotta, this is my client. I gotta go to my webinar where I answered that question. Like, how do you get in those three boxes right at the top of Google? And I'm typing it out. So, you know, here's how you get in Google screen. Number one is reviews. Number two is recency. Number three is location. Number four is um, your bid. Number five is um, proximity. And, I, and I, I'm typing out this answer and the light bulb goes on. Remember I said I was a little slow and I'm like, oh, this is a great blog post. So I copy and paste the, the, the text 
and and I format it and I put it as a blog, and then I can either put that on Facebook, um, or I can link to the answer on the blog. And and Twitter, you only have 120 characters, so you know what are the top six factors in the Google ranking algorithm for Google Screen? Click here to find out, and it goes back to my blog. So that's a super effective way of repurposing work that you already did. You already wrote it out. You already answered the question. Now you can put that on your SEO and obviously in your e-newsletter, on your social media and your Google My Business. There's a, a wonderful um, website that I put called answerthepublic.com where you can put keywords and then it'll show you awesome. related queries. But Great answer. But, you know, th there's there's like the much simpler answer, which is just ask your customers and listen to them. You know, you made the point, like have your front desk person just make note of what questions she's hearing or he's hearing. And so the, honestly, the very, very best way to harvest questions is just listen, because you're talking to customers every day and they're asking questions. I also think if you shift yourself from a sales mentality to a value add mentality, in other words, you know, Jay, how can I help you? You know, we have 15 minutes together. How can I help you? And then listen to what they ask for help with. That's another example of how to do it. And then finally, with our webinars, we're constantly harvesting the chats. So you guys are actually supplying us with a whole database of questions that we can then leverage for our content marketing and our SEO. And you're doing it uh, with generosity of spirit and we're doing it in a service to you. And really, I think if you think about digital marketing as a way to get your amazing excellence and expertise out to the world in a more uh, efficient way, um, that's really what Jay is advocating. And I think, you know, Jay, I'm very grateful to you. This has been an incredibly um, specific and actionable set of uh, guidance. Uh, I encourage all of you to, to follow Jay. Um, again, a guru of mine, uh, an early uh, entrant into the digital marketing space. I, I did have one question. I know we're running a little long, but this has been very special. So my question to you is, after many years, uh, you decided to niche down and service law firms. And um, there was a term you used when we spoke, which is the, the riches are in the niches. And I'd like for you to just, I think that this is a very insightful change that you made. And I'd love for you to talk about the, just, you know, the thought process that you went through that eventually had you arrive at law firms as your ideal customer, specifically law firms with five partners and who were, you know, with revenue, you know, 2 million and above. Well, I mean, for, for me, um, it, you know, it was again, one of those light bulb moments and I'm a little slow and sometimes the universe sends you really good messages. You got to be open and listen. And I kind of have a personal rule of threes when I hear about something three times like clubhouse, you know, it's a, the new social media and people are talking about it. You know, the first time I, I hear, hear about it, you know, I, I'm not that interested. The second time I, I go and register my name. So I've got Jay Berkowitz. And the third time I'm like, okay, I got to check this out. Everyone's talking about this. So three different people, you know, the first one was Josh Nelson, who I mentioned, Seven Figure Agency, talked about the value of specializing. The second one was a local business called eBuilder, um, which I saw the, the, the founder do a presentation. He said, and he, after he sold the business for $350 million, and he explained that their business really took off when they focused. And they focused only on their, their, their industry and only on their niche. And then the third one was another gentleman who, had a, a PR firm and he only focused on one industry and he did incredibly well once he focused. So I'm like, I'm a little slow. You know, it took me, you know, sort of three or four times being hit over the head. Uh, how did we pick lawyers? Well, about 60% uh, of our clients had become lawyers over, over the years. Um, lawyers are good, good clients. Like if you do a good, good, good job for them, they stay with you and they generally pay their bills. Uh, so everything, all the bad things people say about lawyers, I haven't experienced, um, the only, the only, there's one, one uh, slight negative. The trial lawyers sometimes feel it's their job to put you on trial. <laughs> so every <laughs> meeting, it's like they ask you a million questions. Yeah. But, um, so, we, you know, we looked at our business and, you know, about 60% was in one category and 40% was in 10 other categories. And finally, I'll share the, be the beauty of it. And even if you don't like, if you're not in like a service business and you pick one niche, I would encourage everyone to be really, really great at one thing. Because the, 
the um, the risk is, you know, the old expression, like you can be uh, a mile deep and an inch, a mile wide and an inch deep. Like I used to try and be, you know, the best affiliate marketer in the world and the best search engine marketer in the world and the best e-commerce company in the world. And as the world's, you know, of, of digital marketing has become more complex, there's specialists who only do Amazon, only do Amazon e-commerce, only do, you know, drop ship Amazon, you know, and that's all they do. So if, you, if you're trying to be like e-commerce and SEO and lawyers and travel tourism and Amazon and Amazon dropship, you can't possibly be as specialized. So as we've focused now on lawyers, um, you know, I, I do a, a, other stuff a little bit as well. And I do have a partner company and we do other uh, types of marketing. But, you know, 90% of my day, I'm talking to lawyers. I'm focused on law firms. My webinars each month are about internet marketing for law firms. My team is... Uh, you know, they're 99% only focused on law firms, how to get the law firm listed on Google Maps, how to do law firm SEO, how to do law firm pay-per-click. And we're getting really good at it because that's all we do. That's our focus. And I would encourage everybody to, you know, either be focused on an industry or be focused on an expertise um, and let the industry come to you. And I want to take a minute and talk about why Jay in particular, it's smart for him to focus on lawyers as you saw from his presentation, Jay really focuses on content marketing um, and providing amazing content and answers to your customers' questions. Law firms really need to be good at content marketing. They need to establish themselves as thought leaders in their industry. And, um, and they also have limitations on how they can market themselves set by the Bar Association. And so law firms tend to promote their uh, partners as subject area experts. And so Jay's methodology applies particularly well to law firms, which is why they gravitated to him almost naturally over the years so that they became 60% of his clientele. Now, I want to say that one of my favorite stories about this is Twitch. Twitch is the company that does live streaming. Um, and when they started, they actually started as a 24 seven live stream service that people who wanted to like Truman show blog their day would use. That was the technology, it was a live streaming technology. And they were a spectacular failure, multiple rounds of financing hanging on by a thread. And then when they were looking at their user base, they saw that 1% of their users were gamers but they were avid, avid users. They were the perfect, the ideal customer. And they had the brilliant insight to hyper-serve the gamers. And then Twitch was purchased for more than a billion dollars by Amazon a few years later. So it was really by niching down and hyper-serving the live stream gaming community that, that Twitch was be able to, be, to become successful and also to be able to become uh, acquirable. Uh, and so, Jay, uh, as a result of niching down to lawyers, has your business grown? Absolutely. And, um, you know, even in, 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 in last year, which was a tough year, our business has grown. And, um, you know, the, the other thing is, you know, now I'm focused. I'm doing a monthly webinar on Internet marketing for law firms. And it's not about the webinars, by the way. You know, even Dan would probably tell you it's not about this monthly meeting. It's about, hey, we're you know, every month, every month you send a couple emails, you know, here's, up, here's our upcoming meeting. And then after the meeting, you're going to say, Hey, here's the recording of the meeting. And so it's the marketing that we do by email, by social media, on my personal social media, that's been so powerful. Um, and, um, you know, and then, and the second piece is, I would say is, um, you know, also networking, I talked about the importance of that. And, and everybody now knows Jay Berkowitz does, you know, internet marketing for law firms. 10 golden rules, internet marketing for law firms. I don't know how you do that backwards. Um, and, you know, now I'm starting to get calls all the time. Like, you know, hey, I was talking to this law firm and, you know, they're not happy with their search engine company. Is that is that what you do? You know, yeah, yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> so uh, people are starting to get the hang of it. And, and I'm starting to get those referrals on a regular basis. When you find that ideal customer, it becomes easier to find them online, right? Because they're niched down and easier to identify. And then it becomes a lot easier for you to have a brand that sticks in people's head so that they know who to refer to you, who your ideal customer is. So, you know, BizHack is struggling, not struggling, but is figuring this out a little bit. Like 
you, you can do this in theory, but then really you do it in practice. We really want to hyper serve small businesses that are really constrained by time, budget, and expertise. The hardest case in all of marketing. Um, but what we're starting to learn is that there are certain types of businesses, home service companies, certain kind of B2B consultants, PR and communications agencies, that we've found that we are particularly good at hyper serving. And so now we're starting to have a niched down strategy where we're going to franchise conferences for home service companies and hyper serving the Mosquito Joes of the world and so forth. And so it takes a little bit of time and discovery. It's not like you land there. It's really the practice of doing it in business, being in business and thinking constantly, who is my lowest hanging fruit? Who do I love to serve? Who do I serve most profitably? Who is easiest to serve? And just kind of iteratively getting to it. So it's not something you can think your way to. It's really a guess you make, and then you kind of find your way there. That's awesome. Yeah, Congratulations. Man. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to take just a quick second to do some goodbyes, and, um, and then we're going to, uh, I'm looking forward to, to having us all here again uh, next week. Um, you know Cheryl Cattell, right? Cheryl's a friend. Cheryl's awesome, guys. Don't miss Cheryl. She's yeah. an absolute rock star, and she's lots of fun, too. So, um, so coming up is next week, we're going to have the head of uh, uh, Toyota's finance talking about customer retention. Then we're going to have Cheryl, uh, who's just a force of nature, one of our certified instructors, talking about building up your personal brand. Tatiana, lessons from CMO land. Uh, and then Dan, myself, doing the lead building system, uh, which is really helping small businesses market themselves and then our graduation celebration. Amy Williams, thank you for buying a season pass, supporting this, making sure this is something, a service that we can keep providing. Uh, our next uh, paid program starts March 22nd. We do offer scholarships to women and minority owned businesses. Uh, you can go to try.bizhack.com uh, to learn more and to apply for a scholarship. And we gave, have given out nearly $100,000 in scholarships wow, for entrepreneurs awesome. of color and women-owned businesses just in 2020. Uh, it's something we're tremendously proud of. So great. Um, yeah. So thank you, everybody. Um, I, this is one of my favorite parting thoughts. It's from the head of Zappos, a company, though they're an e-commerce company that puts their phone number prominently and everywhere they go because they know as jay said that that's how you close customers and can and cement loyalty and it's have fun this is a tough time and a tough business a uh, time to be a small business but if you have fun it makes it all a little bit easier before he passed away tony actually gave himself a mohawk uh, to kind of signal that so have fun everybody and we'll see you next week and thank you again jay uh, you were fabulous we'll have you back thanks dan Bye, everybody.